Welcome back to Boom and Bust. I'm your host, Tony Clement, having my monthly conversation with Thomas Caldwell, chairman of Caldwell Securities Limited. We're just dissecting the U.S. presidential scene. So, Tom, you can continue with your analysis, please. Well, let me come back to my initial phrase. It just doesn't matter. One of the good things about the U.S. system is division of power. But it seems to me that Americans rather like, for example, we had this election just two years ago. Everybody thought I was going to be a Trump walk-in, and it wasn't. I think Americans like the concept of maybe a Republican president and a Democratic Congress, or the other way around, right? which does provide a check and balance on the administrative batch, that is, the president. Uh, so I do think whoever gets in, you may see a balance of power in Congress that, that in fact, controls it. Uh, right now, Kamala looks as if she's got the high ground, but she hasn't got into the rough and tumble of debates and, and substance yet. Uh, so that may even things out. I think it's going to be a toss-up. From Canadians' point of view, neither are friends of Canada. They're both protectionist, and America is a protectionist country. Right. And if you're beating them at something in a trade, you must be cheating. You look at softwood lumber. Every time we win uh, at, at World Trade Organization, they slap on new tariffs. That's been going on for 25 years. The, 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 the system is such that if they complain, the tariffs come in right away, and the companies that see they were offended in the States get the benefits of those tariffs, get that money. So this is an unending thing. We're dealing with protectionism. They're both going to be protectionist. The best defense we've always had is a good relationship between our prime minister and the U.S. president. Uh, that has, of course, been in tatters for a long period of time or suffering from neglect. But that's the only defense we have because the right. bias is, is against any outsider. Well, and that's a good point. And, and to reiterate your point about the, uh, the softwood lumber tariffs, that was instituted by President Biden. Uh, so yeah. uh, it's not as if it's just a Republican well, issue. Oh, no, uh, absolutely. No, it, it, and, and, uh, and also, uh, I mean, Keystone as well, if you look back on that. Right. So it, they are protectionist. But if you have a relationship, you know, whether it be Brian Mulroney and Ronald Reagan picking up the telephone uh, and having a chat. And by the way, George Bush Jr. was very pro-Canadian. His standard yes. line was give Canada what they want because uh, we were minimum aggravation. So that's going to be an, a relationship that has to be worked upon, no matter who gets in, no matter who it is. And, and they're both going to come out the same way where we don't have, quote, a special relationship as the British like to think they have. That's right. Exactly right. Uh, I wanted to get your opinion that uh, Pierre Polyev uh, was in the news a little bit uh, as the Canada's opposition leader saying that he would support tariffs on Chinese subsidized electric vehicles. Uh, what, uh, what was your take on that? Well, you have to look at the fundamentals. For General Motors to build an electric vehicle in Canada, the price, the cost is around $60,000. To build one in China, the cost is around $20,000. Uh, that's a huge, huge gap. So something has to be done about it. The Americans are going to do something. I think both America and Canada have to sort of work in lockstep here. Right. Uh, and wouldn't it be great to, if, listen, if you're real environmentalist, as it relates to pretend they are, wouldn't it be great to have all these cheap electric cars that we can buy for 25 grand and run around? Uh, that would be great. But we do have jobs to preserve. So there's, there's, there's that countervailing thing. I, if I had to speak to, I don't, I don't know Mr. Polyev, I watch whatever, but I, I do think that he's strategically still off. He's getting caught in smaller issues. He's got to be thinking in terms of a leader. He's got to be doing a Charles de Gaulle, if you will. He's got to be away from the fray. He gets involved in too many micro things. Winston Churchill had a wonderful line, you'll never reach your destination if you stop and throw rocks at every dog that barks at you on the way. Yeah. He gets involved in the micro. He's got to stay, he's got to stay above the fray if he wants to beat this guy. And Trudeau may not even be his opponent at the end of the day. We don't really know, do we? Uh, certainly yeah. uh, a lot of speculation on that. Uh, we've we've only got about uh, 30 seconds left, but uh, uh, energy sector with Trans Mountain on, on track, uh, it's looking better these days. Uh, absolutely. And in fact, eventually, if you see Poly of N, you may see an opening up in money coming in. So I see a lot of mergers and acquisitions. I'm still along that sector in my portfolio. Well, that's good to hear, Tom. And as always, you've got a lot of interesting insights. So we thank you for making yourself available. Come on our program uh, once a month. Uh, Thomas Caldwell, I'll everybody. Try. Thank you. I'll try to brighten up my jacket the next time, too. <laughs> I'll probably have the dark blue suit by then. But thanks for being you here. You the switch. 
<laughs> okay, bye-bye.